This is Rumble, Rumble with Michael Moore. I'm Michael Moore, and welcome to this episode. I first, uh, before we get into um, what we're going to talk about, just for the next few minutes, um, I just want to say that we got some good news today, earlier today, um, and that is the we our film Planet of the Humans uh, is no longer banned and is back up on YouTube. And you can watch it there on my YouTube channel. If you go to Michael Moore, the Rumble channel on uh, YouTube and look for the full movie icon, thumbnail, and uh, watch the movie. Um, it took us um, almost uh, really 12 days, 11 days, 12 days. And we have won our fight against the censorship of this movie. I'm not going to talk about that today, though. Um, I will talk about it in the next few days. So stay tuned for that because I don't want anybody else to have to go through this again. And as we are, have entered more and more into the authoritarian state that we are now in uh, to the point where even liberals or faux liberals uh, believe that uh, they can employ Trumpian tactics to shut people up and silence them. Um, we all have to resist this and we will resist it. And I will talk about it in the next uh, few days. But to more important matters, which is the state of our nation. Um, this is um, this has been an incredible, um, really roughly two weeks. It started on May 25th when police officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota murdered George Floyd, um, tortured him first, then murdered him. And then, according to the autopsy, held him down and kept the, the knee dug into his neck nearly three minutes after he was dead. The, uh, the autopsy report, the official one, says that he was non-responsive and the knee went and stayed in the neck for another two minutes and 50 seconds while he was, quote, non-responsive, which means, uh, as well, one of the cops figured out there's no pulse here, folks. He was dead. I had uh, I mentioned in a previous podcast speaking to Cornell West about this just right after it happened, a day or two after it happened, and and his worry that people were not going to respond. Um, the people on the sidewalk didn't respond, and therefore, why should the greater American community respond? Uh, we're so used to this. If you're African American, if you're Hispanic. You know, you just feel so beaten down. It's hard to get up and fight. Um, well, people did get up and fight. And by the tens and then the hundreds of thousands, people have been in the streets in all kinds of towns and cities and villages across this country. I've heard from so many of you. You've you've sent me pictures. You've, you've uh, described it. Uh, you've left voicemails here on the podcast platform, on the anchor platform. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. And thank you for everybody who's participated in it. Now, here's the key thing. We have to keep this up. I got to tell you, for everybody who's been out in, in the streets, and because I'm in my own self-imposed quarantine because of my own um, issues, uh, n namely, I had pneumonia a couple years ago, and uh, doctors told me that the because this virus attacks the lungs, that I'm, uh, I'm at... Uh, I'm at a certain risk um, that I have to, you know, have to stay away from people. So I'm not able to go out and participate in this. Um, but many of you have, and many, many more have. And it's the, the fact that you would do this, the fact that you would go out there during a pandemic, during where you, you know, you know the risk you're taking, that you would be willing to stand up for those who have it the worst off in our society, um, whatever, whether you're black or white or brown or whatever, um, old, young men and women, boys and girls, I'm just so impressed. I'm so moved by it that because some of you are risking your lives, you know, a certain percentage of the people who get the coronavirus die. And yet you persist. 
you know full well what you're doing. That's why most of you are wearing masks. Some of you have gloves on. And yet you're out there knowing the harm you could bring to yourself. I just, I can't tell you how, what I think of you right now is like, um, you know, if I could bronze you and put you on a pedestal, have you in the middle of my living room, that's where you'd be. I'm serious, folks. I mean, it, um, and it is the reason why I'm hopeful that something is going to come out of this, not just the something in terms of correcting our police force. I, I believe, and that must, that must happen. That's like job one right now to fix the problem, to make it illegal for police to do these chokeholds, to strangle people, to be, to do any kind of violence to a nonviolent person. I loved how the mayor of Washington today had black lives matter painted down right in the middle of the street, just big. Have you seen that? The big yellow painted Black Lives Matter in the middle of 16th Street, the street that dead ends at the White House, at Lafayette Park there, just in front of the White House. Big, bold letters. You could probably see them from an airplane. You could probably see them from that Marine chopper that Trump has to fly over to land there at the White House. He's got to look at that now every time. Black Lives Matter. And they changed the name of the street there in front of Lafayette Park to Black Lives Matter Plaza. This on a day where now more footage is revealed of police in other cities over the last number of months. See, people have been filming. People have been filming. Tacoma, Washington, Sarasota, Florida. Have you seen the footage? Look it up. All this footage people have been taking of the police trying to kill people. And in some cases succeeding. Wow. Steve Jobs, God bless you wherever you are. You, you probably had a some brainstorming session. <laughs> I, was, I think I was thinking this the other day. It must have been, dad, what else can we put? Hey, what else can we put on the phone? This new iPhone, what can we put in it? What were, I mean, what were the ideas? Well, let's put a flashlight in there. That's a good idea. What else could we put in there? <laughs> Fresh fruits and vegetables? No. Um, a chicken rotisserie? No, no, no. Come on. Be serious. How about a camera? Ooh, camera in the pocket. Everybody's got a camera in their pocket. And they don't have to take the film anywhere to be developed. <sighs> wow. Is this the invention that history will look back upon and say, this changed America? This changed the world? Because citizens could record what was being done to them by their government by their corporations, by their sexually harassing boss. Boom. Genius. And that's why I think the most important documentary of the year is not the one that my friends and I have done. It's not the one anyone you're going to see. It's it's not the Michael Jordan seven-part series, The Last Dance. Uh, it's not the Tiger King. It's what a 17-year-old girl, high school girl, young woman, African-American young woman, Darnella Frazier from Minneapolis. She stood there with her camera and filmed all nine minutes. She stood there feet away from men with guns. She stood there and filmed it so sadly, horrifically, perfectly. When they tried to block or stand in the way of the cop, with the knee, she just moved a little bit, made sure everything was framed right. At one point, Devin, the cop with the knee, he looks up at her. He sees her filming. He looks right into her lens. He doesn't do a damn thing. He just keeps his hand in his pocket like this is just a normal day. Oh, yeah, you're, you're filming me? Keep filming. He had no shame. He was in the process of torturing and murdering and then defacing the body of a dead human being. He was doing all of that, knowing he was being filmed, thinking that here in white Minneapolis, you know what? Even with that footage, I'm going to be okay. Darnella Frazier, 17 years old, made the most important nonfiction film of the year. I don't know if there's some way next February or March 
for the Academy to recognize her, for somebody to recognize her, because I want to encourage all young people to use that phone, use that camera, be a witness, be a witness to injustice and show it to billions around the world because billions have seen that footage. It is the most watched film of the last decade or two or ever. Stunning. Thank you, Darnella. God bless you. I hope you're okay. I'm sure you've had to deal with a lot of stuff here over these two weeks. If there's anything I can do, I'm sure many people in the documentary community would be there for you. And to all the other Darnellas out there, man, get the get the camera out and start filming it. You can even edit right in, in these new phones now. You can make your own little movie. Show the world. Take a stand. All these others, you know, as I'm recording this uh, tonight, it's the this would have been the birthday of Brianna Taylor, who was killed, I believe it was back in March, in Louisville, Kentucky. She's an EMT, a first responder. She's sitting at home at night. And all of a sudden, somebody's trying to barge through the door. The police drug enforcement team had gotten the wrong address. And so they were barging into her place. Plain clothes, not in uniform. Guns a-blazing. Her boyfriend fires one shot back. They fire more than 20 back. And eight of the bullets hit her and kill her. She would have been 28 years old today. <laughs> you know, if you're black, this is like... <laughs> You're like, Mike, why are you sounding so surprised? We live with this every day, every week, every month, every year. No, I'm not surprised, but yeah, you're right. All of a sudden now, the attention that is being paid. Sooner or later, someday it would have to end. It was going to have to end. And maybe we're in the moment now where it will end. But it won't end on its own. It won't end unless our voices are loud. These protests have to continue. They have to be larger. All weekend right now, there's a memorial service in North Carolina with George Floyd's family on Saturday this weekend. And then on Monday, there's a public memorial in Houston where um, he's from. And then on Tuesday, the private funeral and burial. We all need to be making a lot of noise and a lot of our voices have to be heard. We will not take token fixes here. We have to fix this now. All the studies and the research and the suggestions and the, the white papers and everything that have been done on this, we already know how to fix it. There's nothing to learn. I think I heard some, somebody who was involved in one of these commissions said literally every police department could be fixed in 90 days. Now, I think I'm not so sure about that because it would, if, if it meant the same police that are now on the force, that's going to be a little hard. You're, somebody who's a racist is not going to become not a racist in 90 days. But that's why they have to go. You know, in Buffalo, they pushed that guy yesterday. They pushed that guy down. 75-year-old guy, the cops. I don't know what the, the old guy was just going up to him to talk to them about something. And, and they they pushed him down on the cement. He hits his head. He, his head starts bleeding. It looks like he's he's barely responsive. And the cops just keep going. Wow. So they suspend the two officers that pushed him. And in solidarity with their fellow officers, the other 57 Buffalo police officers on the emergency response team, they resign from being part of the emergency response team. And you know what I say to them? Good fucking riddance. You shouldn't just be off that team. You should be off the force. We have to remove a lot of these police. We have to think of a different way to do policing. I'm hoping to have a guest on uh, later uh, this week, we're going to talk about this, the actual ways that we can change the system. We can't think about policing anymore the way we always used to think about it. It's one of these things, you know, that we're not going to go back to normal when we're through the pandemic, post-pandemic. 
the way we police our society is going to be different. It has to be different. Don't let the demonstrators learn the wrong lesson, that they didn't burn enough buildings down, that they didn't break enough glass windows. They know and we know that's the way they get our attention. That's when changes occur. That's when they friggin' arrested the cop that killed George Floyd 12 hours after they burned a precinct down. Didn't kill anybody. Didn't hurt anybody. Just burned the building down. How much more of that do we need to get it through our thick skulls? That No, we don't need to burn down any more buildings. We don't need to break any more windows. You know, let's just do what we need to do in a civilized society. Our voices have to be heard because the other thing here is it can't just be about fixing the cops or fixing the police force. We have to fix all this other stuff. And I know it may seem hard. And I know white people, it may mean that we're all going to have to sacrifice. We're always going to give up a little bit of our privilege, but that's the only way it's going to get fixed. I, I just, I don't know what to say. I, um, I will not be a participant any longer in a system like this. And I am going to set up some kind of internal mechanism in my own conscience where I'm going to constantly call myself out on it. If it needs to be every day, it'll be every day. Hopefully not. But when I'm thinking about what I need to do or what I'm, how I'm benefiting from this society, I need to think about how others are going to benefit, others who are not white, How are they going to benefit from it? And if they can't benefit from it, then it is wrong for me to benefit from it. Everybody has to be allowed in through the door. Everybody has to have a seat at the table. If you see that somebody is being kept from the table, you have to give up your seat. You don't have to permanently give it up. You just have to get up out of your seat to make sure that person or those people People, how many ever number they are, are led into the room so that they have a seat. No more sitting around, turning your head the other way, pretending it's not happening. It's been happening for too long. You've been the beneficiary of it. And in doing so, you've committed an act of violence. Because if you take something away from somebody and the only reason they're outside the room is because they're black, You've committed an act of violence against them. You've made their lives more miserable. You've created more suffering, more torture for them because they couldn't come into the room. They couldn't come in and have a seat in that school. They couldn't get a good job at that good place. And if you got it, then you participated in the violence. It is our collective white knee on the neck of black America. When are we going to take it off? I'm serious. I will not participate. I won't even tangentially, I won't even tangentially participate. I won't even, even if I'm, I'm six degrees of separation removed from the actual horror that's going on, but somehow I am a beneficiary of it, living in white society, living in white controlled society. No, no, sorry. I'm out. I'm out. And if I stay in, then I'm, I am going to do everything I can to undo the crime. These are crimes, crimes against humanity. Do you understand what looting is? It's not breaking the class, the, 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 um, the glass windows at Christian Dior. Looting is what we've done to black America by forcing so many of them to work for seven twenty-five an hour, $8 an hour, $10 an hour. That's stealing. That's thievery. We've looted them. When they have to deal with the landlord, the land, when the landlord has a right to evict them, oh, and the evictions that are going to happen after this or during this pandemic, phew, that's an act of violence against black America. And any time that we benefit and they lose, we benefit financially and they don't, we've looted from them. I posted the statistic um, yesterday on um, on my, uh, I think Facebook and Instagram. The, The median 
net worth of white households is $171,000. And I know I already heard from people saying, wait, man, I'm white. I don't have a hundred. No, it's not that you don't, you don't have a $171,000 cash. They take the, the actual value of the home that you own or that you're paying on, but you've got principal in it. They take that, they take your car, your two cars, they count all that up, your 401k, count all that up, your furniture, the things you own. You know, in Michigan, if you got a good union job, you got a cabin up north in addition to your home. You add all that up. White families have 10 times more the net worth than black families. The, the median income of a black household is $17,000 is their total worth, total net worth. You know this is wrong. And you know you can't keep living like that. It, any For any year that goes by where we have 10 times what the average black family has, we've looted them. The riots that we cause, the, the way that we make life is so friggin' difficult. Whether it's simply just being pulled over you imagine where your heart goes when you see the cop in your rearview mirror walking up to the door of your car and you're black? Your heart is beating so loud, so fast, it's down in your stomach, it's back up to your throat. It's called that's called a riot. The, the police officer is rioting outside your car because you are immediately in danger. Your life is in danger. That's what riots do, right? They're supposed to do. Like there's so much chaos and pandemonium out there. Shit, people are going to get killed. Yes, that's what it's like driving while black. That's what it's like when you walk into the department store and the security guard's following you around. That security guard and the department store are causing a mini riot by following you around and suspecting you from being in there because you're going to be in there and committing a crime. That's a riot. This is violence. This has to end. We have to throw people out of office who are part part practitioners of this. We have to remove officers from the force who don't understand this. And we have to be loud right now, tonight, tomorrow. They're so hoping. They keep calling for peace, please. We want peace. You want peace? Of course you want peace. Where's the peace been in the black community? What peace have they had for the last umpteen years, decades, centuries? Get over it. There's no peace. There's no peace as long as we loot the black community. There's no peace as long as they have to go through a friggin' riot and the fear of losing their life simply by stepping outside of their home. My friends, please. We need to be active and involved right now, today, this weekend, this week. The power structure has to know that we are not going away. I'm begging you. I'm begging you to do this. I'll do what I can do, you know, from the confines of my quarantine. I'll, I'll post stuff. I'll, I'll show people where to go. I'll, I'll put out some ideas. I've got a lot of ideas. You can follow that on my on my social media, on my Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I'm no longer a participant in society as we know it. I just I need to I need to tell you that. That puts me hopefully in a dangerous position. I hope so. Because, you know, I'm in like I'm in the probably the final third of my life now. It's still a long time, hopefully. But um, I'm not living like this anymore. I'm not going to participate like this anymore. And I am going to challenge myself. Look, I've done a lot. I've done, <laughs> I've done a lot, believe me, since I was, uh, before I was a teenager, I showed up. I participated in things to fight this, to fight the racism in the town uh, that I grew up in. That's a story for another day. I wrote a poem yesterday. George Floyd implored, please, officer, what's this all for? You're killing me. 401 years. You're killing me. 
hundred and one years. The white knee to the black neck. The collective white knee, your knee, my knee to the neck of black America. The white noose around the black neck. White silence is the knee. White silence is the noose. White inaction is the death of all of us. And that death is not far away. That's it for this episode of Rumble. Get busy. Get active. Protect yourself. Do something. I'll talk to you over the weekend here at some point. Be well. We have no other choice. Your silence is a luxury. Hip hop is not a luxury. Your silence is a luxury. Hip hop is not a luxury.